Welcome to Girlfriends of a Certain Age, a podcast for women in midlife. We are busy living our best lives. I'm your co-host, Fleshe Hesh. I'm a business coach and work-life balance expert for women. And I'm your co-host, Jessica Neighbor. I'm a voice coach for vocalists and public speakers online at Impact Vocal Coaching. We are girlfriends in real life, and in every episode, we'll discuss a different hot topic about becoming wise women, recovering from being a good girl, and not giving a bleep anymore. If you identify as a girlfriend of any age and you want to join our conversation, join us on Instagram, YouTube, and girlfriendsofacertainage.com. Hey, girlfriend. How are you? Hey, girlfriend. Happy Monday. I'm good. You know, slowly waking up, but thrilled to be here with my my caffeinated tea. <laughs> I love it. All I have is water, which, you know, is it's probably a good thing uh, for the right. audience to not have me super caffeinated. <laughs> You and I are both in this, this window of parent-teacher conferences. I had both of mine last week. It sounds like mm -hmm. you've got one today. Mm -hmm. There's always so much going on, but I love that we have the ability to just drop right into these conversations and, and be together. So I'm so glad to be here with you. Absolutely. And I, funny, I'm, I'm on the teacher end. This is my coaching um, family check-ins. So it's oh. the week of family coaching check-ins. Yeah. So I see so you're in teacher mode. Okay. I'm in teacher mode today, telling everybody about the progress of their singers. Yeah. Oh, well, good luck with all of that. I know that you'll, you'll do really well. Thanks. Today's topic is so different than what we've been doing for the other episodes. And just to catch everybody up on the girlfriend chat, so I'm your business coach and mm -hmm. we were having a coaching call the other day and we got into this topic of finding ease and grace and that state of flow with our work. And we decided to keep the conversation going for today's episode. Yes. So in that conversation, when you and I were talking about that, when the good girl starts to rear her head a little bit mm. at work and we start to work a little bit too much, do you want to just catch everybody up on what that looks like or what it was looking like for you? Absolutely. Well, we've, you know, we've had a great um, evolution with my work practice and you know, I was a real hustler for years and worked really hard and I'm proud of how I built my business up. But I feel like uh, with your help, I've really gotten my business to a place where there is a lot of workflow. And I would like to say that the majority of the time I'm comfortable with that. But in our conversation last week, we were talking about a particular topic and I felt like I had to over prepare. I felt like this is almost too easy and I need to have more effort happening in, you know, preparation for this thing to be good and to be good enough. And in that moment, I think you and I both went, oh, oh, that's that old good girl saying, oh, you got to work harder. You got to work faster. You got to work smarter. So I, I thought this would be such a great topic to open up to our audience because it's so funny, like being my own boss, running my own business for many years now, having you as someone to check in with, that old good girl still pops up every now and then. Are you sure that's enough, Jess? Are you sure? Shouldn't you do more? <laughs> yes. And it can and be I exhausting. Know. It can be really annoying and exhausting. It is exhausting. And I know that this is something that most women struggle with around yeah. work. You know, we know that we don't get paid as much as men. We know mm -hmm. that we get talked over. We know that our ideas are not always taken seriously or taken so seriously, they're snatched right out of our hot little hands by Ooh. some fast talking dude, you know, in the boardroom. Uh -huh. so, and as a woman of color, I've also always pushed myself to do more, be better, uh, work harder, stay longer at it just to be taken seriously. Mm -hmm. And so I know this is something that we all struggle with. And there's this idea too of like, who am I to find ease and grace or a state of flow with my work? Isn't it meant to be hard? And I'm here to remind all of us, absolutely not. Absolutely not. I, I just think as a blanket statement, 
if you are constantly overextended and not feeling appreciated and 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 the work that you're putting out is not really coming back to you i would also question are you doing the right work are you at the right job so i know that you're doing the right work and you're mm -hmm. at the right job as an entrepreneur running her own amazing business from home <laughs> you know, with your vocal coaching so when it popped up the other day it mm -hmm. was so surprising because you hadn't been there in a long, long time. And so it was fun to check back in with the, the good girl in you and tell her she could go back to taking her nap. She could, she could go back to sleep because everything is working. <laughs> everything is flowing and you have all the systems in place. That was the thing I noticed. It was like, that's it. Oh my goodness. All the work that you've been doing for all these years, putting mm -hmm. all these practices in place, mm -hmm. making it easy for people to pay you having policies and procedures that are just, if, if someone doesn't meet them, they're yeah. not your client. They're not going to show up. They're not going to get their lesson, <laughs> right? You know, that you've become so boundaried and in this graceful, easy way, it's so easy to work with you now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And so here you were getting ready for something and there was really no hustle required because you had already done the work. Yeah. And it's like just trusting that, trusting that, oh, wait, yeah, of course, of course, this new way absolutely works. I think that, and I was going to ask you the question of where that, you know, that ingrained, you know, if we could peel it apart and pick it apart a little bit, where that uh, ingrained kind of good girl, you know, pops up. And that's the truth, too. I think all of us who are recovered good girls know that it's not like she just sits in the corner for the rest of her life. Like good girls can be like really bad girls and like come up and shake things up every now and again. Right. Maybe if we're just a little off our game or feeling a little vulnerable. And uh, I think that it would be interesting to pick apart a little bit of those systems about why we feel that way when you talked about real quickly about the doing the um, automated systems i can't tell you what a game changer that was um i you know used to kind of recreate the wheel every time to now have a really smooth onboarding process to now have an actually easy billing process like oh my gosh like eye opener you know and even in some instances to offboard some of the things that aren't, uh, you know, as you put it in my zone of genius to other people, you know, I think I had this idea and in general with the, the workflow that you had to arrive, you had to get to a certain level before, before it could be easy. Right. Mm, right. Um, you, you had to get to a certain level before you could offboard um, because it's like, oh, wait, I, you know, I don't have the budget or I, I have a, a limited budget, but there's something for all of us um, business owners and, and workers of all kinds at different levels. And so that was really great that you showed me automated systems and the means even to get assistance and things like that, that um, were very attainable. Uh, and I thank you for that because yeah, then you can actually sit back and I don't know how much of it is related to like the drama of the busyness, that American feeling that is so ingrained in us that busy is better. Um, but boy, you know, it's, I think it's, especially with the pandemic, we all took a step back from that and thought, hmm, do I really wanna live like that? So I, I'd love to get your point of view on it just in a in a more broad sense about where where do you think we're getting that messaging from to, that busy is better? Mm. Well, I think the first thing that comes to mind is that we're talking about how we make our living. We're talking about how we keep a roof over our heads, take care of ourselves, our loved ones, be able to save for the future. And so that we're talking about life or death issues, mm. right? Um, even the most well-off family, could find themselves in dire straits, you know, where the stock market takes a steep enough turn and, and negatively in their direction, or, mm -hmm. you know, their house burns down, all kinds, all kinds of things could happen. I think mm -hmm. we get a, a, a strange sense of security, like around material things. But what we're talking about is 
our survival. So we're talking about very low chakra, very much about survival. And so if I have a job and I do a job, so this is whether you're employed uh, for, for someone else, by someone else, or you have your own business, or it's complicated, or you're doing gigs or whatever it is, the money is coming from other people. And so that could dry up very quickly. And so I think we're always aware of that in the back of our minds, that this job could go away, or I could get sick and not be able to do this job anymore. The economy could go to hell, like all kinds of things could happen. So when we're working, we're always trying to make ourselves unfireable, mm. unfireable. How can I show up for my clients, for my boss, for my colleagues, for myself, so that I can, I will never be without. And so I think, first of all, we have to really honor that, that we're talking about survival. It's not something flippant. What somebody right. said to me one time about a social media post, oh, you just talk about it like it's so easy, but it's really scary. Some mm -hmm. of us are hanging on by a thread and it's true. Many of us are hanging on by a thread and we're in very uncertain times right now. So I think it's even, even more so. So when we're talking about that, this idea that, you know, this is my survival, we want to work hard. We want to work hard. We want to show up. We want to show our colleagues that we are reliable. We want to do a good job. Most of us really want to do a good job. We want to be excellent. And so because this is also, I think, a very uniquely American thing, that idea of, like you were saying earlier, I'll do it when I make this much money. When I hit this mm -hmm. benchmark, mm -hmm. then I'll hire an assistant. When mm -hmm. I get to this point, this many social media followers, then I will buy myself a new laptop or wh whatever the thing is. And the truth is that most of us, we don't acknowledge our wins and we mm -hmm. don't have them written down. So we don't even know when we reach them. Mm -hmm. and, and oftentimes reaching the uh, goals that we have aren't as exciting as we thought they would be. I can't yeah. tell you how many of my clients have said to me it, just in a very passing way, oh, and then I hit six figures. I was just talking to my tax advisor and, and I'm like, what? hold the phone. What? That's one of your goals. Why aren't we right. having a party? It's like, oh, right. you know, it doesn't feel as exciting or as amazing as I thought it would be, Fleche. And I see that over and over and over again. Even reaching our goals doesn't feel like the pinnacle moment we were expecting. So I have this saying, which is to set up your work around the life that you want. And you can, you can take micro steps to doing it. And so like you were saying, getting a little bit of help with this, getting a little help with that, or even stepping away. I find that we often need to reassess my efforts, even making a difference. Mm -hmm. You know, I stopped doing my newsletter for several months because I realized it was, it was getting stressful. I had other projects that were really juicing me up, super exciting, far yeah. more productive and so I just let it go. And I realized, yeah, that's not bringing me the quite what I'm wanting and needing from the newsletter right now. I'm right. going to just take a break right. and to reassess. So we're all flying the plane. We're all still have to work and provide and take care of ourselves and contribute. So that we don't, most of us don't take a break. Most of us don't take sabbaticals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like our your, our friends in Europe will, will, will tend to do. They're so much better at making um, work is just part of their lives. It's yes. not all of their lives. And I think part of the American culture that's very unfortunate is that work becomes our lives. And we're, we buy into this really sick and twisted story that lot, our, our work is our life. Right. And we have mo so many women, all, most of my clients are moms. How many women pretend they don't have children. They don't mm -hmm. put photos of their kids up on their desk. They don't want to remind their colleagues. Well, the real reason I leave at six o'clock is because I got to pick up my kid at soccer practice, or I've got other, my real life is outside of these walls. Right. I do think that's one of the gifts of the pandemic. I'll mm -hmm. never forget. I was on a call. I had to call into some service office and this guy had his children in the background. So it was a man. And he's so apologetic. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. My kids are in the background. It's very unprofessional. And I said, you right. know what? We're all going through it. You know, you can hear my kids in the other room. Yeah. I think you get extra credit for the yeah. fact that you've got your family at home. It's a stinking pandemic. Everyone's yeah. like very uncertain. Right. I just think that the pandemic gave everyone the gift of saying, 
yeah, this is not my real life. My real life is the, the people who I love, the, the, my hobbies, the things that I do outside of, of, of my working. Yeah. And so the more we can bring all of ourselves to our work, I think that's your secret sauce. I think that's what makes you unfireable, that you just all the skills and qualities and abilities that you bring. And yeah. I think especially as women, I know I, I don't know where I got this messaging myself, but that I could do anything a boy could do and probably better. Mm. And I, I just remember grabbing onto that concept. Like, yeah, I'm going to beat the boys at their own game. Right. And I did over and over and over <laughs> again. And I brought that into my work life. And I think it made me a reliable worker, mm -hmm. but it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't fulfilling. It didn't fulfill you. The no. thing you just brought up too, about the client with the kids in the background and him being all nervous. Do you remember that viral video where there was a guy who was being interviewed for like a news show and his oh. little kids broke into the room and then like a, a mom or a, a woman who knows who she was came in and kind of, you know, grabbed them. And I remember it making such a splash because it was like, oh, imagine this. You know, isn't that hilarious? Like, look what happened. And then it brought up a great discourse about, okay, why is that so shocking that, you know, a, a dad's home with his kids? Why is that so shameful if they break into the room? You know, uh, where can we keep it a little more balanced so that that isn't a huge shocker? And so I think that that's something that, um, our, like you're saying, America in general, like has a problem with, you know, and that motto of um, you live to work rather yes. than work to live. And I will say that definitely getting into middle age really has given me the freedom to realize, oh, you know, life is becoming a little more finite. How do I want to live it? How do I want to spend my time and value what I do. And so creating those boundaries, you know, for me, it's working four days a week. For me, it's getting off by, you know, six o'clock so that I can have dinner with my family. For me, it's not overbooking myself on any one day. Those are things that now I've been practicing for a while, but I had to learn the hard way. I would yeah. exhaust myself. And, and the, the other part that I think if we're in a little bit of that, you know, old way of thinking about work, and sometimes we have to, let's keep it real too. Like there's statistics out there that in certain cities to, to be able to afford where you live, people have to work three job, three minimum wage jobs. So there are also systems in place that are absolutely making it near impossible for some people to get into this mode. So I just want to acknowledge that I'm sitting from a place of privilege that I get to say, oh, I work four days a week and, you know, have these boundaries. But that is what I see for myself and what I, I feel like everyone, if they can, the benefits, you know, the, the, the ability to be present, the ability to have room to exhale, to not feel like I'm bogged down all the time. I'm able to enjoy the rest of my life more and I'm able to enjoy my work more you know, uh, by not working so hard at it. So, and then when you do that, I, I see you doing yeah. this very beautifully, but when you are not so stressed out, you're able to get into the state of flow and the state of flow is where time disappears. You know, we just get completely immersed in a project in a really yeah. genuine way. It pulls us in yeah. and it's, you're, you're using your, your best skills and abilities and so I think that's very important. Um, and I think ev everyone can do it. Even if you have the most mon mundane, monotonous job, there's mm -hmm. a way to find a state of flow. It is a practice. I think of it as a spiritual practice. Mm. You absolutely can do it. But then those four days that you're working don't feel like a slog, right? right. And then you're getting back more than you're giving out. So mm -hmm. I think that's an important piece of it too. And mm. finding that ease finding that grace. And of course it, it didn't hap happen for you overnight. It's been a process yes, of trying different systems, trying different software programs to get those systems in place. 
now you're real, you know, and it was trial and error because it's, it's all about your own psychology. What yeah. is your workflow? You had to discover right. it and test it. And it's been changing over time as well as you have changed and evolved as a woman, mm -hmm. um, as your kids have gotten older, you've been, you know, you've opened up in certain ways and mm -hmm. refocused in others. Yeah. So I, I think it's important. Uh, most people don't take a look at, at their lives or their work or their situations or even where, where and how they live usually yeah. until something bad happens, right? Yeah. Some kind of crisis, losing a job, uh, your spouse decides that they're leaving, something really jarring. And you're all of a sudden, oh, but what if we just took a few minutes, got out our, our trusty notebooks and just wrote a few things out about mm -hmm. the state of our lives? What are you tolerating? Mm -hmm. What are you tolerating at home? What are you tolerating with your own behavior, your own choices? What are you tolerating at work? just write those out. It's very, it's very freeing and it's far more gentle than people think it is. Mm -hmm. But that place of finding that ease and grace with your work and deciding what those systems might be for you. Mm -hmm. Even when, if you have a job, I remember when I had a, a, a corporate job and they kept asking me to make these financial reports. And there's a reason why I trained to be a therapist <laughs> and did right. not go into finance. <laughs> you know, I'm doing these, these financial forecasts. I kept saying, this is not a good use of my skills. This is right. very stressful. I'm not good at this. I'm, and more importantly, I'm not doing a good job. Yeah. Why would you have me doing something that is just, I'm losing at every turn. Yeah. And my boss just said, oh, just, just keep at it. You'll, you'll get there. And then one day the light bulb came on. I think it was from reading Tim Ferriss's book, the four out, the four hour work, four hour or, work week. Yeah. yeah something yeah. like that. It was a mm -hmm. good, good, pretty good book. And he talks about, even if you have a job, you could hire a virtual assistant to help you with certain tasks. Mm -hmm. And I I'm lucky. I was able to turn to my husband and he's a whiz at, at spreadsheets. And so he made me the spreadsheet to do the financial forecasting for these very complicated um, calculations. Hmm. And then from then on, it was like, boom, I would just upload the spreadsheet and it would populate and I would send it out and say, you need to double check this, but it took all the stress and strain. Right. So like even going to a website like Fiverr, F I V E R R.com and hiring someone to build you a spreadsheet. If you're in a similar situation, love or help Fiverr. you make it. I love mm -hmm. that's a game changer. Yes. Or find if you need to make something pretty, go to Fiverr and find a designer to make it pretty for you. Yes. I, even if you're paying for it out of your own pocket, you might even be able to write that off. You could talk to your tax advisor about that. Even if you have a, a if you if you're employed, you might be able to do this to find little systems for yourself to make things easier. And so I would start with the biggest pain point that you have. And so I know for you, one of them was how do I get paid? Mm -hmm. And then how do I set it up so that I don't have to stress and strain or explain it? I, I once worked with a healer who had, I thought some pretty passive aggressive payment um, requirements, mm -hmm. and it made it so hard to pay her and, and, and decide when to work with her and all these things. And I remember just thinking, this is not healing. She's doing healing work, but I feel right. stressed out trying to pay her every single time. And so when you can make it really easy for your clients, you yes. make it a yes for them, then they don't have to decide, you know, am I going, am I going to work with Jessica? The system is already in place. And so it's right. easy for them. You remove all the barriers that were places where they can get stuck or become their own bottle. Definitely. When, um, when we, you know, discovered the, the, the beauty of PayPal or the beauty of an online reoccurring payment system where you can just sign someone up for a reoccurring payment that they agree to for a certain amount of time. That was beautiful because I remember you saying, you know, your, your, your expertise is not in accounting. And so I think for those of us who have to do our own billing, it can cause such anxiety. So having Venmo or PayPal or some online system that can do that is brilliant. And it's also great for your actual accounting at the end of the year. But boy, do I remember the old days of like chasing down people to remind them about, you know, payment, collecting checks and cash and, and doing all of that. And um, it was, it was a lot of work and it, it, it created a lot of unnecessary anxiety. So yeah, the payment system has been a huge game changer.
Oh boy. Well, and it removed that for you, but also for your clients That's because right. you don't get drama anymore with getting, with the people paying you. So I think that's the other thing people will often push back on me as a business coach. I know, but I don't want to pay PayPal or Stripe or Venmo. I don't want to pay them that processing fee. Oh, it's worth it. (laughs) It's so worth it. A, it's a cost of doing business. Um, And B, your clients trust it. Yes. When a client is putting their credit card information into the interweb, it, that alone is stressful. Even if they're Mm -hmm. paying like Amazon or some big, really official, super solid, you know, encrypted software, you know, website, it is still anxiety provoking to put those valuable numbers and send them off. And Mm -hmm. people trust Venmo. They trust PayPal. They, they, so they, they know what to expect. They also know if there's a problem, there's a bigger institution that's going to support them. So it's very worth it. it. Because again, that's removing any of the barriers to entry for your client. You've got to think yeah. about their psychology as well. Absolutely. And it helps the client relationship because you're not feeling bitter about them for getting a payment. And you know who knows what's going on in their life. There could be a gazillion reasons why, and then it's going to make them feel funky. And it's, it's, really wonderful to almost keep that outside of uh, especially coaching sessions because you you just sort of don't want to have that transactional relationship you're you're trying to build a trust um, and in my case because I do vocal coaching with teens and with adults sometimes you know there's a double client relationship so it's not like I want to tell the, the you know the kid on the call hey you know your parent is going to pay me. Yeah. So it was yeah. such a huge game changer. And I've been so excited to share that with other um, people who work for themselves just because that's great. And then like it with my husband who, you know, is much, he works for a company, he gets paid every two weeks and in a much more traditional way. He had an aha moment the last few years about setting up, um, you know, uh, automatic bill pay and also taking automatic withdrawals for you know different savings so like for our children's college fund or for our retirement fund and just automating these things so that you don't think about it because i mean i don't know about everyone else but when it comes to like putting away a little bit for myself that might be the last thing i do but if it's automatically being taken out then it is like a no-brainer so that I think for us as a couple has really made us happier. Cause I know when it comes to couples, money <laughs> can be one of the biggest deal breakers, right? So that, that system for the thing, you know, the money and the budget that I think can just cause so much anxiety and stress for a lot of us was really, really helpful for, for us as a couple too. And that's creating a healthy habit. Right. And it takes all the psychology and the emotion out of it. Yeah. Right. You had to use your psychology and your emotions and the dynamic and the relationship and all the past conversations. You had to work through all that one time. Yeah. And then you set up the habits, you know, and now it's all automated. And now it's just this gift that keeps on giving. And now you're free to enjoy your husband and not be stressed. Did we do that? Is there enough? Are we saving enough? You've taken care of all of it. You t- you've dealt with it head on and mm-hmm. now it keeps giving you a gift. And I think that's where that can, that good girl or old way of operating, especially if you can relate to having scarcity earlier in your life. If you grew up with, you know, maybe unstable payment, uh, or if you grew up, a, a lot of my friends who have immigrant families will talk about how, you know, the push to become stable is uh, because there was a scarcity before. So that can be really ingrained in us. But boy, when you can get to the, like what we're talking about here, the flow and the grace, it's so liberating. But I think for a lot of us, we'll step back and go, oh, wait, am I am I allowed to be here? This is, is this for me too? I thought this was just for the fancy people in the magazines, mm. right? And that reminds me too of self-esteem and self-worth. Today's episode is brought to you by the five-minute work-life balance digital workbook. Do you need help achieving work-life balance? I will teach you how to take back your time and your life. You can forget about feeling guilty, 
overwhelmed and out of balance. You will discover the nine unexpected strategies to achieve work-life balance. My name is Fleshe Hesh, trained as a marriage and family therapist turned business coach and a work-life balance expert for women of a certain age. I'm the mom of two. I'm a CEO, published author, and a podcaster. So today you can get access to the digital workbook, my online course, and me, your coach, for $29. This is available for a limited time and the link is below. Self-worth. And so I think that's also what the good girl, um, when she rears her head, her sweet Mm. little busted (laughs) head. (laughs) You know, she rears her head and we need to acknowledge her. Yeah. And because she's remembering a time when she didn't feel worthy, or even if she worked her tail off, no one acknowledged it. No one noticed her. No one praised her. She didn't get her gold stars for doing the good and right thing. (laughs) And so she thought, I'll just have to be gooder, right? Because Mm. like we've talked about before, there is no definition of what it is to be a good girl, right? Mm. They keep moving the carrot away from (laughs) you. You keep chasing it. And so right. now that we're grown ups, and when she rears her head, we can just be gentle with her, maybe even talking to ourselves. Oh, mm-hmm. what's going on for me? Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel like I have to work harder. Well, what does that mean? Work harder? <laughs> or, uh, oh, there's no, there's no stress and strain and worry and frustration. I'm not burnt out. I'm not overextended. Uh Oh, I might be doing something wrong. Mm-hmm. When I think that's the, that's the goal. And one of the gifts of, of reaching midlife, we are more generous with ourselves. So many of my friends are so honest about, oh, I just take naps now. Yeah. I just stop. I go sleep in the car or whatever, <laughs> whatever needs to happen in the middle of the day. Yeah. And, and, uh, a lot of my friends are teachers. And, uh, so they're just kind of coming off of their parent teacher conferences and just saying one of them was especially was like, I just took a really easy, graceful approach to it. I just said what I needed to say. I said it with love. And it was a really easy two days of doing parent-teacher conferences. And Mm -hmm. so I I just see that there are so many women who I know personally who are talking about this, not in a very explicit way like we are right now, but they're just like almost surprised they found it. You know, Mm -hmm. oh, wow, it was just easy and it worked and everything got done. And, And there was no stress and strain. So I, it's so possible, but I think it starts with an intention, That's right. the desire to have that be our lives, the yeah. desire to heal the wounded part of us who feels like she needs to be overextended, overgiving, overdelivering mm-hmm. and putting others first and just letting herself be a wrung out old rag on the floor, mm-hmm. uh, you know, cleaning up the mess, but yeah. not, not getting what she needs. And that yeah. we are absolutely capable of it. And I, I just, I really want to encourage everyone listening to this to look at even one thing, one area of their lives where they could maybe have a little bit less effort, a little less strain, a little less pushing. Mm-hmm. And who could you ask for help? You mm-hmm. might also be surprised who would be available to help you. Right, right, exactly. Because the beautiful thing is, if you're in a position where you can evolve, where your work or your mindset about your work evolves, it just gets better and better. You know, by this age, we're starting to know what we're good at, what areas it's like, oh, give that to somebody else. And how can we, in our in our work lives, create that, that um, honoring of what, what's good for us and what isn't. It's really a wonderful, mature approach to work. And it's the gift that keeps on giving too, because you're able to actually enjoy your work and the aspects of it that are creative and are, you know, stimulating and interesting when you don't have all of that other stuff going on. So it's, it's really interesting to talk with you today and think about how, you know, the, the old good girl is, it's, it's this older piece of us, isn't it? And even um, as we grow and evolve and mature, she, she, she can, you know, like you said, come out of her corner every now and again, but just kind of acknowledging that 
she'll she'll come out once in a while um, but really where we are now is it, it's such a more like firm grounded place and you know just speaking for myself it's it's such a wonderful place to be i i never want to go back to the drama filled days it's just a wonderful way to approach work and life uh you know and like the pandemic taught us we this is this is it this is this is the ultimate so what are we going to do with it in our daily right. lives and Stop i do telling. you know you you really helping with the clarity around that both in a very like nut and bolt kind of way and then your much more spiritual part you know an emotional part of it i'm, I'm grabbing a piece of dust that's floating around in front of me <laughs> <laughs> um ha has been very very pivotal um for me and i just think that th this is you know i think what so many people as we're reading these articles these days about quit quitting and after the pandemic i think this is what so many of us are are longing for in in our lives and so it's pretty awesome to to have it and and to to feel into it and to believe it. So I do have you to thank for really helping me, um, you know, be where I am. Oh, it's my pleasure. And, <laughs> and, you know, you're so open and willing, willing to do the work, you know, so it's such a joy to, to get in there with you and, and roll up our sleeves and, and, and see all the progressions that you make. Um, you know, as, as you were talking just now, I was just reminded of, you said quiet quitting. And the mm. first thing, my mind flashed on two things, people quitting mm. their jobs, like quit, 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 not quiet quitting, but yeah. quitting, <laughs> quitting and like leaving their partners very abruptly. Mm. And I was just thinking about how, you know, most of us don't really have the skills to know how could I turn things around? Mm. How could I get happy in this relationship? How could I get happy at work? How, you know, that, you know, all those things that what they have in common is is you or us. Right. Mm. And, um, you know, I just, well, I just want to remind everybody that a little bit of self-awareness goes a very long way and to be curious about ourselves, to be curious about other ways of being, mm -hmm. um, just because you've always been, you know, who you've been, whether it's the good girl or very sharp or very opinionated or like a bull in a China shop, whatever your strategies are for, for surviving your life, you can always learn a new way. And that's why I like to start with one small thing. Usually mm -hmm. the thing that someone's been tolerating the most is the most painful and the most obvious. Mm -hmm. What's one, what's a one degree shift you could make in that dynamic? Cause even that one degree shift over time. Yeah. Really compounds. And yeah. um, like you were saying about automating the savings, yeah, you know, it, it's just so teeny tiny. And so I'm not talking about reworking your entire life, but right. even just tackling one aspect of your life, whatever that is, that's got, yeah. getting you down, you could make a significant shift in your life and, and maybe even, my goodness, heaven forbid, finding yourself in that place of ease and grace, finding yourself in that state of flow on purpose you just turn that switch on mm. so um it's just a, del del jo a joy and a delight to be able to share about that and i imagine we'll be talking about this more because it's mm -hmm. one of my favorite topics for sure um but to see you know that you very you very quickly caught yourself last week you mm -hmm. know what was mm -hmm. it like after our call w was she back in her back in her place or was were, you know, or did, were you still looking for to push some, some more? No, no, she was, she was back in her place. And I think also just acknowledging that we're going to have those, you know, older voices and the, those older ways. And it was just so great to have the perspective with you to go, oh, that's, that's what this is. That's what's poking at me right now. So I think even being able to name it gives me a power because then once I name it, it's not so scary anymore. I know, I know what it is. And also I don't have this um, desire anyway, anymore to eradicate it. It's part of me, you know? And that hustler girl and that girl that had the vision to work for herself and take that leap and, you know, work really hard. I'm really proud of her. But then at, one, at some point she didn't serve me any longer, you know? Right. So, I'm proud of the good girl in a weird way. 
Um, but I need to, you know, just let her come and go every now and then. And like you said, kind of acknowledge what's going on um, and then move on, move on with move my life. On. Move mm -hmm. on. And that's a whole and integrated way that is so much what we're being invited to do at midlife, mm. to allow all of our parts of ourselves, all of our mistakes, all of our fears and anxieties and yeah. traumas and dramas, and to make friends with it. And all of that story is makes up who we are right now, right in this minute, listening to this podcast. Exactly. That's our secret sauce. And so if you're ignoring it or pushing it away or drowning it out, it's gonna, it's gonna get you. Exactly. It's gonna get you in the bad yeah. way. Yeah. 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 That little yeah. good girl's gonna come. Come. Oh, I can hear your chickens in the background. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. My chickens are out. It's a sunny day and uh, we have some urban chickens here in Oakland, California, and they are out clucking around having a good like old time saying, preach preach <laughs> <laughs> i don't really think chickens worry about being good girls <laughs> they're just so. after that grain and worms <laughs> <laughs> i love it what a nice lighthearted way to wrap up our episode i, I just want to thank you for um you know for your willingness to share about your process in mm -hmm. you know when your good girl reared her head the other day and how you got coaching and you worked through it uh, because I know for a fact that this is helping thousands of women who are hearing mm -hmm. this story and looking for uh, a solution to their own work situations or ways that they could find more ease and grace at work. So on behalf of them, I thank you. Thank you so much, Flache. It's been delightful. Right. I'll see you next time. Bye, girlfriend. Bye. Thank you for tuning in today to Girlfriends of a Certain Age podcast. Do you have a girlfriend who needs to hear this message? Share this episode with her. She will love you forever. If you enjoyed today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and comment wherever you get your podcasts. Stay tuned for more episodes where we discuss more hot topics about girlfriends living their best lives. You can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and girlfriendsofacertainage.com.